I am sure that you have heard of the concepts or ideas of the Anthropocene, Gaia, planetary boundaries, or more recently, Earth system boundaries. However, you might not be familiar with all of these concepts. My name is Joe Straw, and, and in this and coming videos, I will be talking about first the Anthropocene, which is the lecture you're hearing right now, then Gaia, then planetary boundaries or Earth system boundaries. And then, from the fourth lecture on onwards, I will begin speaking about individual Earth system boundaries. Each lecture builds upon the other. By introducing the Anthropocene first, then you have a better understanding of Gaia. And by having heard about Gaia, it becomes an introduction to planetary boundaries. All of these videos were produced during 2024. And it could be, if you're watching these videos in the future, five or ten years from now, you might think that some of them are a bit dated. However, in all likelihood, you actually see that there is a continuity, that concepts and ideas beginning in the 1970s can be traced through a timeline up until today, and they might still seem rather new. I hope you watch all of the videos in this series, and I hope that they bring value to you. Let's get into it. We will start with the Anthropocene, but to do this I thought that I would take you on a small, everyday adventure that just happens to be close to where I live here in southern Sweden. Come along. Here we are, just outside the small town of Sörösandby in very southern Sweden. And we are in the location of what is sometimes called a golden spike. In geology, and particularly in stratigraphy, the science and studies of layers of rock. We find a number of locations around the world that have been designated as what are called golden spikes. What is meant by that is that, that we find a particular change or transition from one layer of rock to another. This indicates a change from one geologic period of time or aeon or era or age, etc., from one to another. And we find this visible in particular locations in particular places in the world. The history of the Earth in terms of geology is approximately a bit more than four billion years old. And geologists and other natural scientists have divided up the geological history of the Earth into various periods and aeons and so forth. They have divided up geological time based on specific changes that they have observed at certain, at various locations around the world. For example, the emergence of new important species in the fossil record will occur at a particular layer. They were not found beneath that, they were found at a particular point, and then they are found afterwards. That seems to suggest that there was a change in life on Earth that was important at that particular period of time. Or there are other changes that have occurred that have, can be found in the various layers of rock at various locations around the world. Now I'm simplifying this explanation for this video. We can have changes in sea level, erosion, sedimentation, we can have volcanism at a particular location, an area several um, square kilometers in size or several hundred square kilometers in size. But there are also global scale changes, the movement of continents, which geologists and others call plate tectonics. We have large areas of the earth being moved from one location to another continents crashing into each other and forming mountain ranges or pulling apart and oceans forming in the middle of what used to be a continent. If we find a number of changes around the world that are taking place at the same time in the geological record, this would suggest that there would have been changes at the global level. I already mentioned the appearance of fossils in the geological record as an indication of some sort of important change that has occurred. Another possibility would be that one could find layers of volcanic ash 
at the same time in the same kind of geological record in the same strata at a number of locations around the world. There could have been a period of prolonged and intense volc vulcan volcanic there could have been a period of prolonged and intense volcanic activity which would leave a record here and there around the world in the, geo in, in, in the stratigraphy. So, based on multiple sets of evidence, geologists and other natural scientists are then able to piece together the history of the planet, the geological history of the planet. And they have, in, by and large, reached an agreement on this and one of the important parts of the geological history of the, the Earth and the understanding is what is called stratigraphy, the layers of the different kinds of rock. Here, outside of Sorosanbi, in a nature preserve with the beautiful name Vogelsongs Dalen, we can find a reference point, a golden spike in this global system of references. The Golden Spike is actually more correctly called, or this location and so forth, is more correctly called the Global Boundary Stratotype Section and Point, GBSSP, sometimes just GSSP for short. But uh, we better just keep calling them Golden Spikes for short. This spike, this location, despite the fact that I've been here more than once, uh, I haven't been able to find a specific marker that has been like a spike pounded into the layers uh, of sediments here. This spike marks the beginning of the so-called Sanbian stage, which was about 458.4 million years ago. This marks the first appearance of a particular kind of graptolite and a graptolite is a stationary form of an animal that would have been found in seabeds uh, and was filtering out nutrients from the seawater. So about 458 million years ago, where I am standing now would have been under, I don't know, 100 meters of uh, seawater, maybe less, it's a little unclear to me. Uh, and the Sanbian stage of the upper Ordovician lasted over five million years. Now for a geologist, or at least for many geologists, five million years is an incredibly short period of time compared to the Earth being over four billion years old. And the Ordovician geological period is just one of six periods in the Paleozoic era which itself lasted about 41 million years, the Ordovician, that is to say. So this video is only going to scratch the surface, so to speak, about the aeons and eras and ages and periods and stages that has been agreed to. And yes, there, and, and yes, there are other resources available for you. There are books, there are articles, uh, and you can take a quick peek at this. And this is what the International Commission on Stratigraphy, or the ICS, does. The ICS establishes and maintains a geological standard of time, a time at a global scale. The sections and points, the golden spikes, that may or may not be hammered into place, these denote the location or evidence of global changes in terms of life forms, changes in the atmosphere, and whatever else is used to measure the changes. So now you might be asking yourself, so Joe, what does all this have to do with the Anthropocene? That's a good question.
Well, the idea of the Anthropocene was popularized by Paul Kurtzen in the early 2000s. He may have originally gotten the idea from Eugene Stormer in the 1980s. The idea behind the Anthropocene, of course, is that human activities will be able to be found in the geological record in the stratigraphy of the upper crust. Eugene Stormer might not have been the first person to have come up with the idea of the Anthropocene, but talking about the history of the concept before him would be beyond the scope of this video. Kreutzen, together with Molina and Roland, have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1995. When you get a prestigious award like that, people tend to listen to you otherwise more, so he was placed in the position of being able to spread and popularize the concept of the Anthropocene within the academic community. And from there, after a while, the idea of the Anthropocene crept out or leaked out into the rest of society. The idea behind the Anthropocene assumes that human activities are so pervasive that in the future it will be possible to find evidence of human activity in the geological record. There really is no opposition to the idea of the Anthropocene within the natural science community. However, the, the question is, should the idea then be translated into actually deciding that the Holocene, which is the present period of history since the end of the last ice age, if the Holocene should now be replaced with the Anthropocene, if there is enough evidence in the geological record to warrant a change in one epoch, the Holocene, to a new uh, epoch, the Anthropocene. So this means that the question that the International Commission on Stratigraphy is, is faced with, or has been faced with, are two. What should be the indicator? and which locations around the world are evidence of this kind of indication and should be used as the golden spike, as the golden spike concept has been used in the past in stratigraphy. The ICS has considered a number of potential indicators to show when the Holocene would be transforming into the Anthropocene, or when the Anthropocene can be considered to have replaced the Holocene. One such indicator would be the presence of microplastics, or plastics as in, in general, that in the future that one would find the stratigraphy uh, an area where there were no microplastics, and then we would start to find microplastics in varying amounts above that. Another uh, possible indicator that has been debated was uh, finding radioactive fallout from nuclear explosions which took place um, in the air or on the ground. Beginning in 1945, the United States detonated, and then other countries detonated, a number of nuclear devices and tested them. Uh, the last country that we know of for sure that de detonated a nuclear device in the atmosphere or on the ground was the People's Republic of China in about 1980. Other detonations have been underground or under seawater, and the radiation has been sort of kept in one place. With explosions which take place in the air, then the radioactivity is spread around the world. Another possibility will be a variety of emissions which took place uh, at the start of the Industrial Revolution in the late 1700s. Um, beginning in the United Kingdom and then spreading to other countries. Initially a very localized kind of spread of emissions and then ultimately at some point becoming a global spread and certain kinds of substances would then be considered. Such indicators would show up in the stratigraphy and would show that the Holocene was starting to end and the Anthropocene was starting to begin. Uh, but there would be a debate upon which one of these indicators would be best where we could find examples of that in sediments uh, and whether this would then be possible for geologists in the future, thousands of years into the future, looking to now and saying, yes, that is a clear example of the end of the, of the Holocene and the beginning of the Anthropocene. Now, I had planned to make this video during 2024, and here it is, 2024. Uh, and the ICS reached a decision during March of 2024 about the Anthropocene. So in a sense, this was very timely for me, and I had already written some of the script, 
so to speak, uh, at the time, uh, and I was beginning the process of recording, and then I found out about, out about the ICS decision uh, a couple of weeks after it actually was made. As we can see, the ICS stated that despite its rejection of the Anthropocene as a formal unit of the geological time scale, and other things that they said, they also quickly say that the Anthropocene will remain an invaluable descriptor of human impact on the Earth system. This means that the ICS is saying that when it comes to stratigraphy, they cannot accept the idea of the Anthropocene. It is not helpful and useful to them or they cannot uh, rely on the indicators, or they cannot rely on the locations, or a variety of other factors. So therefore, the Anthropocene has been rejected as a geological epoch. The Holocene has not ended, and the Anthropocene has not begun. At least that's the decision they've made now. From time to time, the ICS might make revisions about where they have decided that a particular epoch or an aeon or whatever begins and another one ends. So this might not necessarily be the final word right now. There might be a revision or a revisiting of this idea in the future. However, they also say that outside the field of geology, the Anthropocene is a great idea and they believe that it will be used as a descriptor to talk about how humans impact on the earth and not only impact upon the earth per se but the earth as a system the earth as shall we say an organism and that is a nice way to transition to the next part of this video lecture having to do namely with Gaia <laughs>